now by Teva's CFO, Eyal Deshe. He comes to us live from Tel Aviv. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Let's get straight to the question investors and our viewers want to hear about, which is what kinds of purchases is Teva looking for? Well, you know that uh, Teva has been uh, doing uh, acquisition over the past 50 years, actually, that enabled the company to grow globally and become from an Israeli company into uh, the largest uh, global generic company. Uh, we, however, don't talk about acquisition before we make them, uh, but they are definitely on our radar screen, and uh, we believe that that some of our growth, of course not all our growth, most of our growth is organic, some of our growth will come from acquisition within our core, core business and competencies. It has to be uh, within areas that we, we excel and understand. It has to have a very good strategic fit with our strategy, which is to grow our generic business and uh, grow our branded business, which accounts for a little under 30% of our sales. Now, Mr. Deshe, in November, the company said you were looking to expand your range of women's health products. Could you be more specific? Uh, yeah, the, uh, we have uh, a, a fast-growing uh, women's health business, which sells mostly in the U.S. market. Uh, we acquired uh, this business is part of the acquisition of Bar Pharmaceutical, which closed exactly a year ago, December 23rd last year, and uh, the world looked a little different than it is now. Uh, Bar brought with it uh, a nice women's health uh, uh, business, which is about half a billion dollars. Uh, we plan to expand it uh, and more diversified product for women, as well as take it from the U.S. market to the European and to the emerging markets when we have, or we have very strong presence. Now, your purchase of Bar was more profitable or has proven to be more profitable than expected. Will you be raising your long-term growth target, which I believe includes $20 billion in revenue and 20% net profit margin by 2012? Uh, well, your question comes right in time. Uh, next week on uh, January 7th, we are going to host an investor meeting in New York and update our strategy. Uh, we're going to take our strategy all the way to 2015, and uh, I'm sure it will be interesting. So uh, <laughs> it's a little premature. We'll need to wait another weekend one day. All right. We look forward to that. What implications does the health care legislation that is making its way through the U.S. Congress uh, have for your company and generic drug makers overall? Well, uh, the health care reform, uh, I think, uh, presents a, a great opportunity for Teva. Uh, it's all about uh, bringing affordable, high-quality drugs to a larger number of American citizens. Uh, and uh, Teva is right there. We are the largest uh, generic maker in the world. We're uh, by far the largest generic maker in the United States, more than twice our next competitor. Uh, and uh, I think we have all the right tools in order to capture some of that additional growth with affordable prices uh, for people that can pay and will pay for high quality generics, this is what Teva is all about. How does the healthcare reform change or alter or speed up your, your current strategy? Uh, well, uh, it will be a part of our, of our U.S. business. I don't think that it alters our strategy altogether. Uh, it will, uh, hopefully, and again, it's a little hard to say. Uh, and, and it's a little premature because not all the parameter, the business parameter is not all known yet. It's not going to revolutionize our, our business. We believe it will add to growth. It will not be substantial. It will be a nice addition, uh, but, but no revolution here. All right. We thank you so much for your time. I've been speaking with Eyal Deshe. He is the CFO of Teva Pharmaceuticals. He was joining us live from Tel Aviv.